I don't usually do a preamble. I like to just get into what you came for and leave the self-promotion until the end. But at the end, I invite you to tweet at me, and that is the basis for this video. Three different people who shall not be named, because I didn't think to ask if it was okay before I made this, have sent me DMs about 15-minute cities, asking if I would take a look. And I have been looking for a while now. To be honest, I thought it had been explained in a lot of places and I wasn't sure if I had anything of value to add. But now I do. If concern is valuable, I just became a millionaire. But what if you lived somewhere where you could do all of them? That is what it means to live in a 15-minute community. Living in a 15-minute community is about being able to meet most of your daily needs within a 15-minute walk, roll, bike, or transit trip from your home. It requires you to look to your district for all of these things rather than all over the city. So yes, I'll talk about 15-minute cities and what is being shown to us, but more important than the presentation is where this is going and how it will end up. And that, God bless and keep us all, is terrifying. But let's start where they put you, before I tell you where you'll end up. That group of neighborhoods where you spend a lot of your time, that is a district. District planning is about looking at those districts and working to make them better, bringing Edmonton closer to the city plan's vision. The 15-minute city is an idea attributed to Carlos Marino. This is him giving a TED talk in Mallorca in 2014, so the idea isn't no. It is, in fact, decades old. But since then, it has found the right or the wrong ears, and implementation is already happening in places around the world and around Canada. These are the plans for the Edmonton version. It looks at what Edmonton will be in the future. A city with more trees, housing for all, and neighborhoods flourishing with local services, amenities, and attractions for all two million of us which is the one that bothers me the most because with a premier as strong as Danielle Smith, I was hoping for a little more pushback on this. I don't get it. If anyone else does, please let me know because I could use the comfort of knowing right now. Greener as we grow. Greener as we grow is the name of the first official city plan in Canada built around this idea. And the idea is sold as convenience and availability of resources. Being able to walk from home to a grocery store, doctor's office, playground, or school. Goals the city of Edmonton has for all neighborhoods to become 15-minute communities. Find employment and entertainment and recreation and uh, you know retail amenities within 15 minutes of your front door. Councillor Tim Cartmel describes the 15-minute communities plan or district plan as a shift in ethics for city planning as Edmonton looks to be a more livable city and give residents more options. That everything you need will be within a 15-minute walk or a bike ride from wherever you are in the district. Doctor's office, school, supermarket, dentist, parks, all within 15 minutes. Car usage will plummet. People will get to know their neighbours again and will all live happily ever after. And if you say anything different, you're a conspiracy theorist. But the urban planning has been getting some negative attention online. People sharing a map of Canterbury, UK, claiming it's Edmonton's plan to lock us in our neighbourhoods. Something the mayor calls misinformation. The Edmontonians are very smart and sophisticated people to understand and not believe in these conspiracy theories. This nonsensical conspiracy theory thing that's happening. But that is one well-presented cog in a very big, ugly machine. Because let's have a look at what all the other cogs are doing, and what a 15-minute city may actually become. Obviously, I can't provide you with evidence, paperwork, showing all this to be true, because this is just opinion. But opinion based on the experience of having watched people in power enrich themselves and grow that power at whatever cost necessary. And sometimes the cost is us. And the potential for abuse of power here is terrifying. So while some may dismiss these as conspiracy theories, this nonsensical conspiracy theory thing that's happening, I would say they are valid concerns given the behavior of the ruling class of late. But please let me know what you think. Because here's what I think. 
Here is my vision of the future and where this lovely, convenient 15-minute city will take us. Because like buying a house, the type of sector in which you get to live will be determined by the kind of job you have. So there may be a production sector. I was going to say a retail sector, but I'm not sure there will be much retail in the future. It has been made clear that they want a subscribed society. Is it possible to own nothing but have everything? Why would you even want to own a car when what you really need is to get from point A to B? What used to be a car is transforming into a riding service. Someday soon, personal cars may be banned in cities, replaced with an autonomous vehicle service. Will our houses become services too? Why make all these commitments? Imagine a world where all the physical products around us transform into digital services with no belongings, no commodities, no wallet, no assets or property. A world where the only things you can buy are services and experiences. I live in a complex, a place with everything I need to live, work, and play. I prefer the co-living housing because of the round-the-clock services they offer. I subscribe to a food service that sends me fresh ingredients from a farmer nearby. I subscribe to most of my clothes. Every morning, they arrive at my window port with a drone. At the end of the day, I'll drop them to be picked up by the drone. My apartment has no closets, no washing machine or dishwasher. I don't need to worry about mortgage, maintenance, or even renovation once in a while, because furniture and decor became services too. Once we have kids, we'll probably subscribe to a baby equipment and toy service. Every couple weeks, the toys will be swapped and we will receive fresh ones, sterilized, of course. When I travel, I don't need to pack anything. The things I normally use will be waiting for me wherever I land. This new world might raise some concerns, such as how will it feel like not owning anything at all? Maybe this is actually an opportunity to redesign our crowded cities. Soon, we will all have genie superpowers. Things will be there exactly when we need them and gone when we don't. Own less but have much more. You will subscribe to everything you need. Meals, clothes, entertainment, all subscription based. Hence, you will own nothing. <laughs> and in the future, you will be dependent on these subscriptions. And they will probably come with terms of service and limits. Your ESG score will determine your resource usage, and if you go over, maybe your food delivery doesn't happen for a day or two. Or maybe pushing the wrong idea is against terms of service. And there will be levels of subscription service, because if I live in the production sector, say packaging meals for the day to be sent out, I'm not getting a nice apartment or great food every night, which is on par with wage earning today. But at least today, there exists the opportunity to elevate yourself via wealth and success. That opportunity won't exist then. Where you come from will be where you remain, and the chances of ever improving your life will be slim to none. And that will kill the spirit of anyone yearning for more. And with everything close by, well then it would be perfectly reasonable to deny private vehicle ownership. What do you need a car for? Everything is 15 minutes walk away. And if you want to visit another sector, there will be a subscription that allows you to get there. You'll scan your digital ID and the database will let you know if you're approved for the travel, if you have enough carbon credits or have been deemed acceptable to visit that area you were hoping to go. And if any of those things is a no, the automated vehicle will deny your trip and leave the doors open for you to get the hell out and remember your place in life, which is exactly where it leaves you. And with it all so nicely tied together, Maybe if you make supervisor at the food plant, it comes with a better living pod. A small community striving to climb the hierarchy of a local power structure which in the national or global scheme of things is ultimately meaningless. 
Small ambitions for small lives. Give the people something to strive for, but not too much. Just enough to keep them busy and hungry. Busy is safer for them, and hungry creates dependence. And if they do allow travel, well, a golf cart should do you. Everything is close by and they want us all electric, so you don't get the privilege of a vehicle. Maybe if you did make supervisor, you'll get a golf cart. Like now you've really made it. Give all the people you drive by something to work towards. More small goals to distract from the absolute outrage of the whole thing. And look at that picture of those sectors so perfectly controlled. Power usage, resources, all monitored and maintained within certain levels. Well, you now have to justify whatever resource you use, and if you don't like it, well, maid will still be around, I'm sure. And frankly, they will already know who your organs are compatible with before you even hit puberty. And if you really don't like it, where are you going to go? And how are you going to get there? And what are you going to take with you? Because they give you just enough to get by. They drop you off a new outfit every day or two and give you just enough food for that day. And it's very perishable food. So you're not tucking any away for later. Not hoarding for any sort of trip. And you're not getting far in a golf cart. And that Fitbit we all have to wear. Or a chip within us. They say it was to monitor our health. Make sure we're getting our steps in. Which then became your wallet and your ID and your health information. It knows exactly where you are at all times. So there really will be no freedom. Even as a concept. It will be something from history books that were written by people who I guarantee are not driving golf carts. Because while we may end up going back a few hundred years to windmills and grinding our own wheat for bread on a millstone, these people will still have all the tech and luxury and entertainment that they decided we didn't deserve. The elite will still be living the elite life, jets and all. And the rest of us? Small communities striving to fight your way up a power structure that has no power at all. Keep us busy, keep us distracted, keep an eye on us, separate us from any ability to form any kind of resistance or even be involved in a discussion about it. Opinions deemed toxic will cost you carbon credits, maybe even a demotion. And a demotion comes with a much worse living part. But by then, would there be any resistance left? Or just a quiet resentment? which the powers are fine with because they don't care that you know. They just care that you obey. Same as it is today. The small fringe minority of people who are on their way to Ottawa or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they're expressing do not represent the views of Canadians. And within a generation or two, the elite will have become gods among us, and all will obey. Because by then, the myths will have been written and told and retold to the point of legend. The legend that these people saved us all, saved the very planet. And there will be images of societal collapse and riots in the street and people starving in tent cities. All these things may be even orchestrated by the very people who swept in and saved us from it. But that generation won't know that. It is now clear that responsible leadership requires us to do this. And if you think that sounds like a far out conspiracy theory that could never possibly happen, take a good long hard look at whoever is in charge in your country right now. Think of anyone with power and influence in even the last decade, how they have used it and the things they have done, the things they have wrought because they believed themselves to be elevated enough to know what was best for the rest of us. Take a really good look, and then let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Everything I put on YouTube, I also put on Rumble. If you would rather watch me there, or if you want to tweet at me, you'll find links in the description. Thanks again for watching. And God bless you.